A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to the cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rendering the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. The response, Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss, truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, 
the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for his word. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and proceed him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Well, I had just a couple little thoughts on our readings today about doubt and uh, the kinds of th things that accompany it. And uh, the first thought is that it, it, doubt can really sometimes only be removed by, f by action. Um, sometimes action is the best way to kind of cure our doubts. Um, we see this with the, the man, Peter, walking on the water here. And... Um, and, and he is able to overcome the doubt so long as he stays focused on Jesus and is doing something and is acting. Um, I, there's a really, really holy man who converted to the Catholic Church a couple years ago right here. And I know him very well. And uh, he used to be a, a, a Protestant and he used to be a tent revivalist. Yet of all things. And it was just, it's been fascinating talking with him. But he had some really good advice uh, that, that he, I just love to chat with him about preaching the word, about opening the word, all those sorts of things. We have the most wonderful conversations. And he said that the first time he ever gave a sermon, it failed miserably. And it was just a disaster. And he went to his mentor who was not able to be there at the, the sermon that he gave, the first sermon. And, and the mentor said, well, how'd it go? He said, it was horrible. Like, I, I got up there and I was paralyzed. I couldn't even speak. And he said, well, you thank the Lord for that. Because now you know that every time you do say something worthwhile, it's the Holy Spirit, it ain't you. But he said, now go visit the sick. Go visit the homebound. And that was a way of like, because he was having this thing of doubt, like maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. Maybe I'm no good after all. Maybe... Maybe, maybe, but the, the, 
the, the action there, like the doubts can be removed when we go do something. And I, I just really think that's great. You know, like every time I think that I may be, gee, did I make the right decision there? Or, you know, you second guess yourself and all those sorts of things. And you think, did anybody, was that sermon any, if it was a failure, it was a failure. Now go do something worthwhile and take your mind off of it. Um, the best way to cure doubt is to act. And that might, the worst thing we can do is sit there and stew over it and, um, and stew over those doubts and, and the, what Paul's talking about in our second reading, all these anguishes and these, these he's kind of feeling sorry for himself sorts of things. But he says that actually cuts us off from the Christ. Uh, best to keep our eyes on Jesus. You notice that Peter, in the midst of, of, his, of, his, of this miracle, he's walking to Jesus. And I think as long as we're walking to Jesus, we're doing that action. We, if, even if there's a doubt in our head or two, we're walking towards Jesus. We're making some movement. We're acting close, and, and that gets rid of a lot of stuff. So that's the first thought I had. The second thought I had is I wonder if doubt hasn't killed more dreams than failure has. You know, I, I, you think about those dreams that God has for us, the dreams that we have for ourselves, and the dreams that we, we wish that we pray for and hope for. And, and sometimes what kills those isn't failure. It's just doubt. Like, can I actually do that? Can that actually, is that actually possible? Um, you know, a week ago, again, we celebrated the 112th anniversary of this glorious church building and I gotta wonder you know I'm sure there were a lot of people who who doubted it there might have been some maybe there weren't but the the faith of those people who got up and said let's stop doubting and let's build let's do it and um, and they did it but think of how many unbuilt churches there are hmm? Or, or how many like un, unfulfilled dreams that people have had? Oh, I dream I could be a better husband. I dream I could be a better father. I dream I could be what this, that, or the other thing. But maybe I can't. And then the doubts come in. And then instead of trying and failing, we just don't even try. That can be it. God can't drive a parked car, and uh, and so we we have to be. Uh, the good Lord invites us to renew our faith. And to pray those doubts away. You know, the doubts come from the evil one. He's the accuser. That's what the Bible calls the devil. He accuses us. You're not good enough. You can't do it. You can't do it. You might not as you might as even you might not try. You shouldn't even try. You might as well not try. That's what I was trying to say. You, but that's the accuser. God believes in us. And we believe in him. And together we make a mighty team. And so let's ask the good Lord Jesus to continue to look upon us with great love. Let's pray to renew our faith every day. Pray for more faith, more faith, more faith. It's the first of the three Hail Mary beads on our rosaries where we pray for more faith. And we make that prayer with all our hearts. And we cast that doubt away. Let's stand now for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not to make, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and on the third day he was again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. That's what you call the Nicene and Apostles' Creed, all in one. We started.
And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly adore you. By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with the saints Dominic, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Charles, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with the divinity, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We have the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in eternal life to us this Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you 
Pastor Lipsy's food order, may we possess some purity of heart, that what has been made is not made.